Chapter 16 Escape by Night Things did remain fairly stable for the Allens through the winter, which passed swiftly for everyone, each busy with his own activities, yet all of them able to find plenty of opportunity for good times together. Influenced by their gaiety and good spirits, Adra fairly bloomed. Phil observed this, but, as he told the others, the cloud of her real identity still hung about her. All were aware of this, for in spite of the amusing stories told by Jimmy and Marjorie about their new friends at school, Adra was still reluctant to meet anyone. Whenever boys and girls stopped in after school, she hurried to her room and remained there until she was sure the family had shrunk to its normal size. Even the frequent visits of Anne Mary caused her to leave the family circle. Penny and Philip discussed this problem together from time to time, but they always arrived at the same conclusion. Perhaps it's the wisest thing to do, sighed Penny, after one such private conversation late in April. I mean, to stay away from people. After all, we don't know but what Spencer is paying someone to stay in the vicinity to watch us. Didn't Jimmy say just today that he had seen strange footprints in the mud near the back door? Yes, replied Phil, thoughtfully rubbing his chin. I just wish Mr. Shaw would uncover some clue for us to go on. Take a look at his latest letter. He handed Penny a bulky envelope. Most of it is about some property in Florida he says we ought to look at. He says we should decide what we want to do about it. On the last page or two, he has outlined his progress up to now on Adra's case. Penny slowly read the pages indicated. Sounds hopeless, doesn't it? She paused and then said, What's this about Florida property? Just that there's a house down there that Uncle John owned and that now belongs to us, and Mr. Shaw suggests we look at it. Uncle John used to rent it by the season, I thought I'd tell him to go ahead and rent it again, that is, if you and the others agree. Surely we won't want to live in it now that we have this place. But how would we know without seeing it first, Phil? Look, this gives me an idea. School will be finished soon, you know, because there are a lot of farms around here, and the boys and girls have to help their families with the spring plowing. That's why they let the kids out of school earlier here than in some localities. What's this got to do with the house in Florida? Let me finish. What I'm leading up to is this. We've all been aching to try out my boat that Pat surprised me with last fall. We never really tested it then. Why not take a cruise east this spring, stopping at the larger cities along the way to see if Adra finds any of them familiar? If it doesn't lead us anywhere, we won't be losing anything at all, really, since we ought to look at this Florida place. At least, I think we should. At that moment, Marjorie and Adra came in, their arms full of spring wildflowers, gathered on a long walk through the woods. Jimmy, too, came in from a morning of tinkering on the motorboat with Pat Ryan, in time to hear Penny's last words. What do you think we should do, Penny? he asked, curious. We're talking about taking a cruise, kids, Penny answered. Then she and Phil explained briefly their previous discussion. I couldn't let you do it, Adra said firmly. Here Phil has a good job, Penny, and you are busy with courses at the college, not to mention Marge and Jimmy at school. She forgot to tell you that school will be closed soon, Phil put in. Sounds great to me, Jimmy said, his voice eager with excitement. Say, Pat told me a secret today. It might work right in with our plans, too. He and Anne Mary are going up to Marquette Friday and get married quietly. Wouldn't it be perfect if they would come along on this cruise with us? Married? Goody! Marjorie exclaimed. I never thought Pat would get around to it. He's such a slowpoke at times. Marjorie loved to dream about romance, much to Jimmy's disgust. I'll go down and talk to him about it now, Phil said, getting up from his chair. 
I must say, when this family decides to do something, it doesn't waste any time. Pat fell in with the new plans immediately. Won't that make a grand honeymoon for Anne Mary? He mused when Philip outlined their decision. And I can bring the boat down from Dry Dock in Marquette. You kids can arrange what you'll need to take with you and be ready to load as soon as we come back. That way we'll lose no time. Lowering his voice, Pat added, Looks like somebody is moving back into the Spencer place. I saw smoke rising from their chimney this morning on my way over here. I think the sooner you get that girl away, the better. Then followed a week of rapid preparations. Their clothes had to be packed, provisions purchased, and the house closed. At the beginning, it hardly seemed possible they could be ready in time, but when Pat returned with his new bride, all was in readiness. It took only an hour to stow their things on board the cruiser, and just at twilight, the boat pulled away from shore. Secure in the forward cabin, Adra knew a great relief when she felt the movement of the cruiser and realized that at last she was leaving what to her was a dangerous shore. It was on her account that they were leaving at night, but Pat knew the lake. Phil and Jimmy assured her that it would be pure fun to steal away. Pat and Anne Mary, who was Anne Mary Ryan now, were as eager as the rest when excitement was in store. Penny breezed in. We're off, Adra. Isn't it glorious? Come on up to the bridge and see things. We're way off from shore already. Nothing after us or anything. You ought to see the boys absolutely daffy about this boat. Phil said that the house ought to have been left to me and the boat given to him, and Jimmy declares that it isn't fair. But I told them that Uncle John knew what he was doing and that as owner I'd be a restraining influence. Of course, Adra, I'm as silly as they are. Anyhow, you are going to be safe. Please stop thinking and worrying now, can't you? Of course I can, smiled Adra. I'm the happiest person on this boat. I'll go right up with you, but a berth looks pretty good to me, Penny, and if you don't mind, I'd like to crawl in pretty soon. Just think how I'm going to sleep tonight. Why, if the boat struck on a rock and went down, it would be better than... No such thoughts now, cheerily said Penny. With Pat running the boat, there's no chance of that. Please tell me just one thing. Is Pat going to put into port anywhere for part of the night? He is not. We'll keep going all night this once. We won't be followed, Adra, and we didn't leave the least sign of your having been with us, you know. We've told Anne Mary all about you. She's awfully cute and smart. Pat just worships her. It was a happy atmosphere that Adra entered when she joined the rest. Jimmy was everywhere at once, and so was Philip. But Philip found a few minutes to sit down by Adra and talk to her. Well, we're off, he said. Marjorie is still racing all over the place, I think, and the bride, not knowing a thing about engines, can't do any backseat driving, but watches Pat calmly. I suppose she has put her life into his hands in more ways than one. Adra laughed. I like Anne Mary. And I like to hear you laugh, green lady. Please don't call me that, Phil, if you don't mind. Never again, laughed Phil, but it was our good fortune that Penny found you just the same. With that, he rose, gave her a salute no naval officer would have recognized, and started off, running down to the after cabin for something he wanted. He returned to find Penny enthusiastically telling Adra about the boat. You must go all over it tomorrow, she said and see every little thing. She's super, and with the enclosed bridge, we will be snug in all sorts of weather. What fun it's going to be sailing from port to port. Phil, who had been listening during this conversation, broke in to say, well, anyhow, I'm going to see you over this boat myself tomorrow, so you'll not miss any of the points. What does Penny know about 38-foot cruisers, Oil tanks, marine motors, electric generators, and all that sort of thing. 
Adra laughed and looked out into the dark night, seeing distant shore lights and the restless waters where reflections of the lights from their boat lay. In spite of Penny's invitation to see things, there was little to see outside, and Penny, looking at her, felt a pang of pity. You are just nearly dead, aren't you, Adra? Come on, then. We'll get you into a berth quick as a wink. End of chapter 16